Uh, Mike Dunleavy Jr., according to our own Matt Steiny, he has a source report that Mike will become the next GM uh, 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 if the price is right. Okay, so here's how to, how I translate that. Right. Yeah, price is going to be right. Mike's going to be the next GM. So Exactly, um, which is why I was telling Matt that he should have been really beating the drum a lot louder in terms of him having that story first because Woj doesn't have it, Shams doesn't have it. Beat that drum. You had it. You've got it. Right, but it's also not a done deal yet. If the word if is in your report, then it's not the it's not the Woj bomb yet. Um, in fact, we do, and I'm not saying this about Steiny. They were doing it in the midst of a radio show and having a discussion, so it's different. Um, but sometimes we chuckle when somebody use all caps breaking and they go to Twitter and they're like, uh, Bob is going to be the new head coach. Maybe. Right. It's, well, then what are you reporting? But I think we've all believed, I know I have, that Mike Dunleavy Jr. is going to be the next general manager. The only other name anybody has brought up is Kirk Lacob. I've mentioned a number of times why Joe Lacob can't do that. You can't replace Bob Myers uh, with your son. It's just not going to feel good to people. So you put someone else in there, even if you do want Kirk Lacob to have the job, somebody else takes the hits for a couple of years, and then you can move Lacob in if it goes that way. We'll see. I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, but the Mike Dunleavy Jr. idea is interesting because um, there's two sides to his career as a warrior, which was, newsflash, not good. It was not good. His playing days and even some of the things that he said on the way out the door. Two sides, two questions I guess you have. A, uh, do you even know that story? There are plenty of Warrior fans who even have kids now who haven't necessarily been around long enough to know that there is a history with Mike Dunleavy Jr. And B, if you do know the story, do you care still? I'll answer me. I'm old enough to know the story. Yep. I couldn't give a rip. I, like, I don't know why... Mike, in a different job, in a different era, for a different owner, in a different arena, I don't know why that has anything to do with this. I am 1,000% mind wide open to Mike Dunleavy Jr. as the GM. And I'm with you, and I am also old enough to remember, and I remember those days, and I understand why the fans of my age, your age, of our ilk, would have this feeling about Mike Dunleavy Jr. because he was taken number three overall, and he never fulfilled that promise with the Golden State Warriors. But if you take a step back and you look at what was going on with the Warriors at that time, he played for three coaches in his five years, including Don Nelson. And when he finally got on the team that was looking like they might be pretty good, he got shipped out. Yep. And when he got shipped out, what got shipped in became We Believe. So a lot of people look at, those of us who remember, 2007 when he got traded which is now 16 years ago so if you're a 33 year old fan like you know our own lucas i think and uh, the producer or if you're in your early 30s you were a teenager when yeah, that happened you're in and your college you haze really or whatever what was that, going on what it was like yeah. with the golden state warriors and the fact that we believe happened was such a special thing and a lot of fans look at well mike dunleavy they finally got rid of dunleavy and that's why they got good. You know, once he was gone, then the team got good. So it must have been Mike Dunleavy's fault that the team was bad. And by the way, Mark, Maybe it was. They weren't that bad. <laughs> they were not, they weren't that bad. They were not Dave Cowens and Brian Winters bad. If you no, look at but, the records of the teams that Dunleavy played on, they were 38 and 44, 36 and 46. They were not bad by Warrior standards, but Dunleavy was taking number three overall. And everyone thought that he should have been a certain kind of player. And I look forward to talking to Jason Richardson today, Jay Rich, yep. who was on those teams. And he can tell you exactly what Mike was like. Yeah, Matty Barrows and Jason Richardson on the show today, nice. uh, coming up in the 4 o'clock hour here on, on Willard and Dibs. I, like, I listen to that and I go, what if he was the reason? What if he was the reason? What if his play was so poor? Or what if he was the fly in the ointment? Whatever. What if he was? Does that have anything to do with today? I would still say no. Um, and I know there were also things said. Mike and the fan base 
didn't have the greatest experience with one another. And, and, and that may well be true, but I just, I'm having the hardest time taking those days and that experience and applying it to this. Nothing, literally nothing about Golden State Warriors basketball is the same as it was then. There's not one thing. The arena's different. Same nickname. Okay. Good point. And sometimes <laughs> they wear that old uniform. <laughs> the throwback. I mean, yeah. it's a different owner. It's a different arena. It's a different city. It's a different history. It's a different cachet. It is a different entity. The, the, the post We Believe Warriors, famously, what did Joe buy them for? Four hundred fifty million. Yeah, and now what are they worth? Four hundred fifty-one million. Exactly. Times ten, or times twelve. And by the way, whatever Forbes says they're worth, BS. They're worth more. Totally. Okay. Ask Balmer when he bought the Clippers. They're like, man, this thing might go for a billion, and it went for two, and it was immediately worth three. Exactly. These things are a license right now to print money, especially this outfit. Um. That's what this is now. So if these people, if Joe Lacob and Bob Myers and Steve Kerr and that whole group who has proven themselves to be incredibly smart, if they think that Mike Dunleavy Jr. is one hell of a basketball mind and a budding exec, like, let's rock and roll. Cool. Let's see it. And that's kind of my way anyway. I don't like ripping things on the way in. Do you know how many people? Because you don't know. how many, Raise your hand when you thought Bruce Bochy was going to suck as the Giants manager. Half of you did. He was 500, if that, in San Diego. At, right. He was a retread. I say he's an idiot. <laughs> Hall of Fame. Is that right? Do you want to run through all the NBA GMs right now? And you can tell me who the best player is among oh, this current good. GMs. And I'm not going to list all of them because I don't know how many of these guys actually played. But you've got Landry Fields, who Dunleavy had a better career than he did. Sean Marks, who didn't play that long in the association. Mitch Kupchak, probably the preeminent he was, former player. He was, he was, yeah, a, good he was player. a great player. He yeah. was an all-star. He was a champion. Uh, Calvin Booth. Uh, you've got uh, Trajan Langdon. By the way, the funny thing, just real quick, if you had said, how many GMs can you name? I, think I, I don't think I would have been able to fill out one hand. If we play the game of how many GMs are former players. Yeah. What is it? Probably sixty percent. Oh no! I, I bet that. you it's even lower. Okay. And like Kobe Altman, I think he might have had a, a cup of coffee. <laughs> totally, Kobe. Uh, thank you, Rob Palenka. No, nope. Kobe. Zach Kleiman, I don't think so. Andy Ellisberg, I'm doubting it. John, he's a horse with Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get you that. Uh, Sam minute. Presti. Presti. Did he play? No. Exactly. I don't think so. Monty McNair? Uh, maybe. Justin Zanuck? I'm doubting it. My point is, if we're going to hold Mike Dunleavy Jr.'s playing career against yeah. him, he might be the sixth best former player among GMs well, right now. By the way, how many great players have become good GMs? How about that? I'll wait. Exactly. How about that? Uh, Pat Riley would be yes. one. Yes. However... Well, Pat Riley's done. He's been successful at every level, no matter what he's doing. Yeah. Playing, coaching, on and on. But the best in the game have tried this. Michael Jordan tried this. Oops. Magic Johnson tried to coach. Not good. Right? So that's the other funny thing about it. Well, he wasn't a very good player. What the hell's that got to do with anything? He could have been a great player. Doesn't mean he's going to be a good GM. The smart people you respect think Mike is smart. Is that worth something? Is it worth y'all like Bob? Y'all like Joe. So why don't you like who Bob and Joe like? So um I bet a lot of people don't even know the story though. 